Okay, well, thanks very much, Jeff. Um, the, the whole thing started that I was uh, called up to go to the Army in October 1962. And um, I uh, was mustered to the Transvaal Scottish, uh, went to Potchefstroom. And uh, one of the days that we were there, we, we had just basically finished the basics. Uh, we were uh, asked to form up on the parade ground. Um, we didn't know what was going to happen. And there we were, and we had to stand there for a while, and guys chatting away. And the next minute, we hear this drone of a Dakota coming over the parade ground. And out bails this one little individual paratrooper, and he lands in the parade ground. And this was Captain Duplessis, who eventually became Commandant Duplessis, uh, from the Parachute Battalion, he ended up as the first OC of the, the Women's College in George and then eventually got back to the Parachute Battalion as OC of, of Parabats. And he was the captain and he'd arrived to recruit paratroopers. Now I'd made up my mind before I went to, to the Army, I wanted to do the most interesting job and I wanted the highest rank. So he chatted to us and, and told us all about it and so on and then I said, uh, Captain, um, can I become an officer if I go to, to the bats? And he said, no. You, the highest rank that you can get is um, corporal. So I said, but is there no way I can become an officer? So he said, no. So I said, okay, then I'm not going to come to the bats. I'm going to go to the do officer's course first. Then I'll come to the bats. And he says, doesn't matter, you'll do selections. <laughs> <laughs> So they got us all out and off we went and I didn't put my whole heart into it. I passed it, but I just didn't give it full stick because I want to go to officer's course first. But nevertheless, that happened. Then of course we went uh, for all interviews for officer's course and so on and so forth. And I didn't know if I'd got in there and I thought, well, I didn't try my hardest to get into a bat, so I didn't know where I was going to go. And the day that we left Poch, I was put together in a group going to uh, Army Gymnasium, Voortrekkerhoogte in Pretoria, uh, on officer's course. And the other guys who tried for bats and went through the selection, they went off to Bloemfontein. Now, had I just shut my mouth, I would have been on that lot going to Bloemfontein as well. And uh, then while I was at officer's course, uh, towards the end, they... they uh, read out the names of three of us whose papers were in order. The other three, their papers weren't in order. There were six potential guys to go. So you know what the army is like? It said, you, you and you, off you go. So we went to, <laughs> to the parachute battalion. Put us on a train. Uh, I can remember we stopped in Joburg from Pretoria and uh, saw my parents and parents of two other guys um, who were uh, um, candidate officers. And off we went to Bloemfontein. When we got there, a truck picked us up and took us to the battalion uh, that, that uh, evening. Uh, it was a Friday evening, and um, they set us up in the medics' room. They didn't take us to officers' course. We weren't officers, so we had to sleep in the medics' room. And next morning, we woke up and thought, hey, this is fantastic. Put on our uniforms. And we started walking around the battalion. Jeez, and we bumped in. One guy had his uh, neck in a brace. There were guys with broken legs and broken arms. There were about 12 of them. And we thought, gee, what if we allowed ourselves <laughs> to do that? Anyway, uh, we'll get back to that just now. And then that afternoon, uh, oh, and uh, they had a sergeant major um, at the time, Wocky. He was a smallish guy, but he was quite a tiger. And we were walking around the, the, the barracks having a look, and we got this bellow from somewhere. Those three gentlemen will run at all times in the lines. Oh, gee, no, no, started running at us. So that was our first um, blast from, from the parachute battalion. Anyway, that afternoon we went to see uh, The Longest Day, which, which was the, the big movie at the time. And uh, then Sunday, we just cooled, uh, um, took it easy. And then Monday morning, five o'clock, we have to tree on up at the, at the hangar. 
And the first question that I asked, because they introduced themselves, and any question, I said, yes. All these guys that are bust up and broken arms and necks and legs, what happened to them? They said, no, that's got nothing to do with training. That's the rugby. <laughs> the rugby injury. <laughs> oh, we breathed a sigh of relief. And then uh, our course started. And uh, yeah, it was tough. It was April. It was starting to get cold in Bloemfontein. And doing PT, we had leather boots because they didn't have uh, rubber boots in those days. And uh, so you did PT in longs, web belt, and no top. That's it. Five o'clock in the morning, on your back, on the parade ground, doing you know, press-ups or pull-ups or sit-ups and all that sort of thing. So it was, it was quite hectic. And um, then, of course, we started to do the running and cheap uh, creepers. Uh, we'd go out and um, sometimes you were actually crying. You just had to stay with it because they had a rule there. If you dropped out, it was RTU straight away. You mm -hmm. dropped out, they left you there. By the time you got back to camp, your trauma was packed. Your clothes were there waiting for you. you had a shower, they took you to the, to the station, drops you off. It didn't matter if there was only a train the next day. It didn't matter. You were gone. So RTU was not a nice thing. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, only one guy ever... Um, uh, was kept on and we had done a very very long run that day and uh, on, on his way into the gates he just collapsed in the, it was sand there was no tarmac or anything and that guy crawled his way up to the top and he stood up and he went to the instructor and said please can I fall in the platoon and they had pity on him. He was just covered in mud from the sweat and, the, and so on. And they kept him on. He was a very, very good guy. Um, I can't remember his name or him. Anyway, so that was a little bit of the, the background to it. Um, during that uh, first period, we had to put our uniforms on. Long pants, uh, sorry, short pants and this long um, safari jacket. Uh, putties, boots, and everything, and our white uh, uh, tabs. And the three of us were marched into the commandant's office. Uh, Commandant Via Pia Lowe, who became a general, and he was quite a, a character. And we came in at the double and uh, had to halt, salute, and then uh, he said, Okay, stand at ease. And then he started asking questions. And he gets to me, because I was 75 kg, six foot four, really looking scrawl. And he said to me, what is your height? I said, Commandant, on my medical records, I'm six foot two, which was the truth. But I wasn't six foot two, because when I had the, med the medical exam, I got off that thing and I pulled it down a bit. And he said, okay, we'll see. <laughs> so interview uh, up, you know, tension, turn around, off you go. So that was the start of the bats. Then some of the other things, I mean, everybody knows about the PT and, and yeah. the training course and that sort of thing. And then the camaraderie starts to build with the guys when you're out doing storm drop um, and uh, you're running long distances and uh, a guy drops, the chaps would get down into the grass quickly, take off their web belts, hook the guy up and then carry him. Mm -hmm. And then so the instructors couldn't see. And then he'd revive maybe after five minutes or so, and then he was back and running. So it was fantastic to, to see that kind of spirit building. And that's what they wanted. Um, then, then they got clever with us. They said, ah, oh, you guys, you want to be Vankatya. This is the three candidate officers, the lowest of the low. <laughs> okay, you guys want to be big deal. You go three to a stop. So they put us onto a storm, three of us were the five for the other guys. And then every hour in those days, you had a smoke break. Smoke break, eh, eh, you guys carry yeah, on. Yeah. Then you get to tea break. They let you just have a cup of tea and then stomp and you carry on. And one day, one of the guys had the temerity to say, shame, leave them alone. Oh, jeez. Then, the, then, then we all got punished. <laughs> Up and down to the tower and so on. Anyway. Um, yeah, and that tower was about 400 meters above the old hangar, it was a, a watchtower, and over a copy, you had to run up and run down. And then 
anything that you did wrong, Toronto, and all, off you would go, and then back again. And, and uh, uh, you learned very quickly, don't be near the back and don't be near the front. <laughs> Just stay in the middle. And then um, there were days when they'd, they'd start, you know, are you, are you guys tired? No, 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 we're not tired. Vachazilla. And then we started to sing, yo, mood. <laughs> and you go, oh, yeah. Are you tired? Yeah, we're very tired. Oh, you're not fit enough. Go again. Jeez. And one morning, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, before 7 o'clock in the morning, we had done it 10 times. And then they said, we're going on a route march, but we've got a nice breakfast for you. So they gave us a big spread. Um, bacon and eggs, porridge, toast, all that sort of thing. And everybody's feeling like, all right, foot, par foot parade. You have to take your boots off. And they put uh, meths on. And um, they uh, check your feet and all this. And then you put your boots back on. They say, OK, soap pillow. Here we are, guys. Two big bloody salt pills. Slick. And make sure that you drink it. Five minutes later, everybody's just puked their breakfast up. It's gone. Because yeah. you can't keep it down. Yeah. And we were already, we we buggered. And then they said, okay, route march to Marcelsport. You know, how far that is, <laughs> 30, 40 k's, and off we went to Marcelsport. And uh, those were the, the, the sort of things that they did during the training to make it as tough as they yeah. could. And no jumping at the stage. No, no. Then, then we had to go to the, to the hangar. And you have done a lot of parachuting, and you know with a parachute, especially with those military chutes, you make sure that they, those leg straps on your legs and don't get into your crotch. Yeah. But we don't know anything. So you get into the hangar and they've got all these, these harnesses hanging up and they've got the bench there and then they uh, say, so, okay, put it on. They don't tell you to, to be careful. And then they say, so, okay, knees up and take the bench away. And now you <laughs> <laughs> happened to me once. You got your balls really tied up in this bloody thing and the pain and they know where they just keep right anyway those are the kind of things that we went through uh, with the hangar uh, we had on our course uh, uh, quite a few permanent force guys and we had major dr klomp he was on the course and then the three of us second duties and uh, halfway through the jump course we got our commissions uh, so we were now lieutenants, but that didn't matter. These instructors put us on, on extra duties and all sorts of things. You just had to take it. And the commandant would not let us go to the officer's mess. We stayed for six weeks in, in a little room, um, the, the medic's room. And uh, it was funny in those days. And then um, uh, we got to the jumping. And you know, the, uh, the first jump was an Alouette helicopter. Yeah. So they came in with two Alouettes. Uh, the night before, two of my troops, my platoon, um, uh, Symington and Sims, both English names, but both Afrikaners, very nice guys. And I sat with them and they said, we're pulling out. And I, I chatted to them for a long time. And eventually they said, okay, we're gonna do it. And the choppers come down and they load the first four in the one chopper, and then I'm in the second chopper, and I'm the first one in, so I'm number four, and then we go, and uh, Sims is the number one in our stick of four. And you're not going to jump four because it's you all crunched up, and to try and get out of that door, the, uh, the yeah. chopper is not so good. And I was worried because I was one of the tallest in the group, and I thought, geez, when I jump up, I'm going to get my head taken off with the rotor. And up we get. And we start circling over the Koi Kamp. The Koi Kamp was the field just outside the battalion. That's where we did all our jumps. Anyway, Sims um, uh, freezes. And there's one thing they won't do. They won't throw you out. But they, they brought the two choppers down. They didn't drop anybody. And then we got a real eight cut parada. Symington still stayed, and another guy, he was an English-speaking little guy, and he had a big mouth. When are we going to jump? This is all nonsense. You know, he could do his, his drills and all that, but he just, he also backed out. So those two guys got RTUs there and then, and then they started again, and up we went. And that jump was fantastic in that, well, first of all, I was pleased that I still had a head on me when I got out of the, the, the chopper. And you, you tended to find that your whole top half of your body is just starting to, you're going over backwards. 
and you try to kick your legs down and you're just yeah. going over and then eventually it deploys because they were only doing about 60 k's an hour, very, very low speed yeah. you know, and 30 knots and then we, we bailed. And that was my first jump. And then of course you've got the guys on the ground and they instructing you what to do and what not to do. That's great. Then they took us up in a Hercules just to show us what it was like because I'd never been in a plane in my life before. And then they got to the deck and they took us up and you know how they take you to the door yes. and it's circling like that and you're <laughs> terrified. And then we go for the, I go for my first jump out of the deck and I'm number two of sticks of two. And the guy in front of me is our famous instructor, uh, Esteban van Niekirk. I loved the guy. He was he was different kind of guy. And he's still alive today. He lives down in Somerset West. And um, uh, we get get ready. And I'm just concentrating on what I, my drills and everything. And he's gone. And then I'm gone. And then the billowing over the loudspeaker. And I thought, geez, what have I done? And then big, big swearing and screaming, and you're doing this wrong, and you're doing that wrong, and whatever it was. This was Eisterman. He went out spread-eagled out of the plane. He didn't do any of his drills. He was just buggering around. And then he ends up with a stand-up, because stand-up was forbidden. But he, you know, today, he's got back problems. But yeah. he did dozens of stand-ups. And it was, they didn't know it was him. He yeah. was the instructor. So I thought it was me that... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you don't know what to do. You start panicking. I thought they're going to throw me off the course. Anyway, so that, that was that. Then the, the second, third last jump was the first kit container jump. And uh, they gave us, remember, there was very little kit. And a lot of it was made in South Africa to, to, to try and, uh, uh, you know, establish this battalion. And they gave us this uh, quick release rope that you put your kit container on. They gave us 80 pounds in those days of, of sand, which is 35 kgs, in a kit container. And then you put it onto this quick release device on your harness. Yeah. And uh, off we go, and the Herx. Uh, yeah, there were two Herx. And uh, we go and they, <laughs> they drop the guys and you now do your drills and then you pull the quick release and it drops your kit down to 15 feet below you. No, you don't, you know, a quick release, sorry, is for, for emergency. You, you drop from the D-rings, okay? And then the next minute, you just hear, whoosh, 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 and these bloody bags were just falling past us. There was something wrong with the quick release devices. So the guys were releasing, and geez, how somebody didn't get killed that day, I don't know. And these things were belting past us. And so, <laughs> so for the next kit container jumps, I said, no, 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 we've got a solution. And they gave us each a sheath knife. You put it in your boot, uh, and, and, and you're going to jump, and if something goes wrong, then you just cut the rope. Uh, after we had done it, one of the guys got a rope and tried to cut. It took a few minutes to cut through the rope with a, <laughs> with a blunt bloody sheath knife. So, um, because we didn't have the quick release device there. Yeah. And uh, that was it. And then our second kit container jump, we had one left, one jump left to qualify. So they pick a nice dark night and you're going to go and do your your night jump, and it happened to be the same night, but we didn't have enough parachutes. So they took the parachutes and repacked them. Normally they have to hang for three days. Repacked the chutes, and we used the same chutes that night, and we, we jumped out of Dakotas. And I'll, I'll never forget, I came out, and everything was great, and you tense up, you know, to, you're going to hit the ground. You can't hold it, and you re release, and you tense up, and then you release. And eventually, as I release, pow! <laughs> into the ground and then they call you you know number one number one okay number two number two okay and i was number five ah so you arrived eh? i did arrive in a camille durimbos bloody camel thorn about three meters high and i went straight into the middle of it mm -hmm. so then once they've called you then you take your kit i couldn't go anywhere and i just thought bugger this i got my wings i'm getting out so i just tore myself i was pretty <laughs> cut up but uh, it was great. And then Captain Donkey Lombard decided he's going to do, as they always did, a, a flyover. And it's dark, and he's got his lights on, and he's coming in. And one of the, 
one of the stupid instructors decided to drive a Unimog across the, the, the landing zone just at that time. And as he came in, he just pulled up and spade just did this and off he went. But anyway, those were the, some of the, yeah. the things that happened in the early days.